Hello guys, we got a small MLB 8 game slate for this Thursday, May 19th. A lot of early games, so I'm going to be posting my plays early on. Um, before whatever my first play is going to be. Um, before that game you know, locks probably 30 minutes before or so. Um, not sure. I don't have any Yankee Oriole games or players, so um, probably not like a 9 a.m. Phillies Padres, don't think I do either. I think it's Mets Cardinals, so probably, you know, around like 9.30 or so, I'll put them on Twitter. Uh, make sure uh, you do follow on there because things do change, and there are actually a few plays today that might um, change. So getting into it, first one is going to be White Sox, or not, yeah, White Sox and Royals. Um, I have both Chicago's. White Sox and Royals, and this is going to be a yes, so over. On the 0.5, this is Vince Velasquez against Carlos Hernandez. Both of these pitchers are not great. And the Royals don't have Salvador Perez. He's on the IL. But Whit Merrifield's been playing better. Benintendi's been playing really well all year. 4.5 runs for them. Bobby Witt also starting to get uh, pretty uh, adjusted with the majors. And then you got the other side, which is obviously the one that I really like. And... That is the White Sox. They have uh, Yohan Moncada back. They got a really st- pretty talented offensive top half of the lineup and a 5.2 run total. 81 degree weather, 11 mile per hour winds blowing out towards the left. So it's going to help the righties. And there's a whole bunch of righties for both of these teams at the top of the order. So I do like the chances of this going over. Just the, both of the run totals do support this. Now for the second one, it's going to be a no run for sitting under 0.5 for the D-backs and Cubs. This is going to be Zach Gallen against Marcus Stroman. Stroman is due back from um, injury. And the one thing that, this is the, the one that I feel like might change. So the wind is projected to blow 14 miles out as of now. Now, I think you can still bet this even you know if the wind's going to be really strong because Wrigley Field is affected a lot by winds so this could obviously just push a fly ball to a home run Zach Gallen just an amazing pitcher so far this year Marcus Stroman has been okay but it's really the Diamondbacks lineup like they're just bad and um Cattell Marte is also hurt he was starting to play well, but if he's out of the lineup, that's just another plus. He's also a lot better when he's facing lefties. So even if he's in, like I'm still fine with this. So this is going to be a no run for sitting. Cubs, yeah, I, there's no run total here. But Gallon is a very good pitcher. Expected probably to see like threes for these run totals. So really like this under. Now on to fantasy score for hitters. Pitching, I don't really like any props. So I'm just going to skip pitching props for today. And then, yeah, just getting into hitting. I'm going to start off with the Mets. So that is going to be two guys, Francisco Lindor and Brandon Nemo, both of them at 6.5, both overs. Uh, Dakota Hudson is the pitcher that they will be facing. And Dakota Hudson, you look at his stats, a ton of blue. He's been getting lucky. He's not that great. He doesn't have strikeout stuff. He'll get into trouble himself with the walks. Somehow he's a 3.06 ERA, but these numbers, they just absolutely uh, show that he's going to negative regress. His XFIP is 5.11, just the K rate's low. He's got reverse splits, but you know, not really something that I'm going to mind too much because Lindor, he's a uh, switch hitter. Nimmo, he had an injury scare, fouling the ball off his knee, but he was back in the lineup, didn't miss any time, and he looked great, so gonna go back to him Nimmo one of the best uh, walkers so even if he's like hitting he's gonna get on base probably be able to score because I do think the Mets can put up more than just four runs this game so really do like the Mets side now on to the next one it's going to be from the White Sox Um, it's actually different category and that is Hits and walks. So that is Luis Robert. 1.5, taking the over on this one. Carlos Hernandez is simply just not a good pitcher. 
and I think you can also consider taking Tim Anderson, um, but I'm going with Robert because Tim Anderson just does not walk. I think he's got like a 2 or 3% walk rate, which is insane, and Carlos Hernandez isn't really a pitcher that walks a ton, um, or maybe actually he does, 11.5%. But the thing is, Luis Robert, he doesn't walk a lot. I think he's at like 5%. But you just, it's the lack of talent here. Like, he allows a 312 expected batting average, 425 Woba, and then pulling up Luis Robert. Um, his numbers are terrific. He, it would be even better if he was facing off against a lefty, but Hernandez is not a good righty. So I'm, not, like, I don't mind that. But this is why Robert is only a 16 percentile in walk percentage. Um, yeah, 5% of the time. So that's the little you know downside. He might need to just get two hits, but he's a great hitter. 347 expected batting average. He can certainly get the two hits. So I really like the over for this one. And then next we're going to take two unders. Hits and walks again. Carlos Santana, 1.5. Faces off against Vince Velasquez. Velasquez, uh, well, I like the over on the first inning prop for this game, but... Carlos Santana, he has been pretty awful. Velasquez, he, well, that, this is why I'm taking the, the over on this because he doesn't look, you know, that great. He's been in the league for a while now. He's just really not a good pitcher. Like, uh, these numbers, a ton of blue here. So, not good. His walks, 9.6 walk rate this year. Carlos Santana, and the reason why this prop is up is because Santana walks a ton, but he doesn't hit. Like, he has a very low batting average. He walks, like, uh, probably has the highest walk rate out of anybody. Probably Brandon Nemo, Taylor Ward have something to say about that. But top 1% and his, I mean, his one is batting average. 122, he's going to be hitting better than that with the expected batting average, 228. But, I mean, look, look at his splits against righties. He's a switch hitter. He's batting 092 against righties this year. Last year, 184. He's just much better when he's hitting as a righty, but he's going to be hitting a lefty against Velasquez. So he probably needs to get two walks. And, you know, the White Sox bullpen is pretty good. White Sox should score runs, so they're going to be using their better relievers as long as it's not just, you know, like a 10-run lead or something. So he's going to have to face some tough relievers, and that's going to make it tough for Santana to hit. So really like the under on Santana. You just don't see this prop available for guys that are hitting 122. And then the next one's going to be J.P. Crawford. Under as well. Rich Hill. We like taking the under on this guy because he was really going deep. Price Picks is now scared of putting up a pitching outs prop for this guy. Um, he's going deeper into games. But Rich Hill, he's actually been pretty good recently. Um, you know, he's put up a scoreless outing against the Angels. Really good um, pretty much since his first two starts. And against lefties, he's always just going to be tough on them, right? He's point seven five whip um, throughout his career, just kind of always going to be a lot better on the against lefties. And looking at J.P. Crawford, Crawford, he isn't like awful against lefties, but this year he's he's kind of cooled off after a hot start. Splits against lefties, 205, 341 against righties. Um, he does have three homers, but that batting average, like we care about hits and walks. So Rich Hill, not someone that walks a ton of guys. Crawford's walk rate is like okay, but lefty lefty, I do like the under on this one. And then for total bases, going to go with Jordan Alvarez, 1.5. I want to take it over for these uh, Astros, but. Yeah, you look at all the Alvarez props, like I think I just favor the total bases because you can always get that with one swing of the bat. And Alvarez, if you want to take him at fantasy score, that applies too. But if he doubles, no one's on base, you hit this prop, but not that. And then hits and walks, he could, I mean, he does walk at a high rate, so he could just get walked twice and those don't count as total bases. But I just feel better about him being able to do something with one plate appearance. So that's why I'm taking the 1.5 total bases here. Glenn Otto, he is just targeting pitchers that are mediocre. Glenn Otto, 5.2 run total implied against him. 
the uh, it's 85 degrees, wind's blowing out at 15 miles per hour, and Jordan Alvarez is just, uh, I mean, he's a beast. He's one of the best hitters in all of baseball, and it's a terrific matchup for him. So, I mean, these numbers are insane. So, got to take the over on the total basis. I think that's the best prop for him today. And then the last one, got to say this is my favorite prop of the day. That is Francisco Lindor. 0.5 runs in RBIs. The only runs in RBIs prop today. And that is because I do not believe in Dakota Hudson. Francisco Lindor is batting at the top of the order. Brandon Nemo is fine. He's not hurt. And he's batting right behind him. Nemo gets on base so much. And Jeff McNeil is having a very good year, showing signs of his all-star season from a few years ago. Pete Alonso, of course, power. So they're just guys ahead and, and that can get on and then also guys that can drive them in. So... I do think Lindor is in a very good spot today. Switch hitter, Dakota Hudson. I just feel like he's going to have bad luck. His numbers show that he's going to negative regress, and that is why I'm going to be targeting Lindor as my favorite play for today. So that's going to be my lock of the day and my thumbnail for this video. So Francisco Lindor, um, you know, hopefully he has a good game, delivers for us just like Jazz Chisholm's done for Wednesday. So... Thank you guys for watching. As always, we got a big Friday slate of a full slate of baseball, so don't force anything. Just take this eight-game slate. Kind of easy, but Lindor is going to be the play. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.